one of the most easiest things that you can do as a single man or a single woman is to believe that you are loving, that you are kind. Why do you believe that? Well, because sometimes you take some of your money, you give it to a beggar in the street. And sometimes you do help, you know, with things that you are not required to help. And sometimes you do good that even people tell you that you are a good person. But the problem is one, you live alone. You are by yourself. So... There are certain things about you that you are able to hide. You are not able to show other people. And if people were to know these things about you, they will not have the same image about you which they have now. Now, what does that have to do with a spouse? What does that have to do with a wife or a husband? Well, the thing is this. During courtship, you're going to put your best foot forward. You're going to, you know, a woman is going to make sure that she always looks the best and and the man is always going to make sure that he's always at his best behavior. And then after marriage, well, remember, every time you were meeting your po you know, prospect wife, prospect husband, you were always clean. You were always putting your makeup on. When you're a woman, your hair, were, your hair was always nicely done. But the problem is that after you get married, the man is going to start seeing you in images that you didn't want him to see before. Do you see that? So now he's going to start to see you in your real image. Not the image that you were presenting, the image that you were projecting before him during the courtship stage. In the same vein, the man now, because he lives with you, he's, he, he's going to be like the way that he really is. Because... You know, a man can only act for that two hours of going out on a date or that two years or one year of dating in which, you know, he's always trying to put his best foot forward. But when you start living with a person full-time married, he's, he cannot act anymore. He can no longer just, you know, he's going to start have these outbursts. And then now you're going to see the woman after she just comes from the bathroom, you know, to do number one. And then she doesn't look the same way as you met her when you met her at the mall. Why? Because now this is who he is, you see. So even after she has put makeup when you go out, you know exactly what she looks like without makeup. And if you cannot love her without that makeup, if you cannot love her when she ha she's having flu and messy hair, when she's wearing baggy clothes and you can see truly what her body looks like, you're not loving her, you see. So it is easy when she was looking herself in the mirror and thinking that I am like this because she has put everything to be like that. But when the man becomes the mirror, she, he sees exactly what she is. He sees exactly who he is, you see. And if a man is able to love a woman for exactly who she is, then this woman has found true love. Because the thing about the mirror is that in the mirror, if you were to go to the mirror right now and you raise your right hand, the mirror is going to say that your right hand is your left hand. And if you were to, you know, if you're able to blink your right eye without blinking your left eye, your mirror is going to say you actually blinked your left eye, even though you have blinked your right eye. So what does that mean? It means that when you're living alone, the only thing that can give you a reflection, the only thing that can give you a study of who you are is a mirror. And, and, and the mirror will always lie to you because the mirror has got things disfigured because it's saying that your right hand is your left hand. But when you're living for a human being, when you're living for if your wife or if a husband, they're not going to lie to you. They're going to tell you exactly what they think that you are like. And if they are loving enough, if they are your soulmates, the one that those who truly love you to improve you, to grow you, to make you a better person. They're going to love you exactly the way that you are. But they're not just going to love exactly the way that they, you are and leave it at that. They're going to love exactly the way that you are, but, to, but in the way that they love you, they're going to improve you. They're going to make you grow. They're going to make you a better person. So what I'm saying that a husband or a wife is better than a mirror. What I'm saying is that when you are alone, you think that you're a good person. You think that you're a better person. You should try getting married. And when I'm saying you should try getting married, I'm not saying that people now should get married in trying to prove that, you know, they are good or they are bad. But I'm saying that marriage is the biggest challenge for a man and a woman in terms of testing whether they are really good, whether they are really loving, whether they are really forgiving, whether they are really understanding. Because when we read the Bible, we realize that God does really use marriage to test a man's love, to test a man's patience, to test a woman's love, to test a woman's patience. Because when you marry a person, they're going to really test all that. They're going to make a lot of mistakes. They're going to do a lot of wrong. But the thing about us is that we understand perfect, that we are not perfect, that we are imperfect. And in our imperfections, in our wrongs, in the things that make us, in, that make us incomplete, we go to God 
in our uncleanness, in our evil, in our wickedness, and pray to him and ask him to make us better, not to reject us, not to throw us out of the kingdom, to understand us, to understand that we're just flesh, to understand that, you know, we are naturally sinners, and we're always going to struggle with this sin, you see. That's what we ask God, we ask God to do. We're asking God to forgive us. We're asking God to love us and make his love for us make us better. We're asking God for grace. We're asking God for understanding. We're asking God to be kind and patient with us. And then God says, okay, you know that me being God, not necessarily me, I'm talking about God saying that you know that me being God, I am perfect. I am holy. In everything that I am, I am complete. I do not need anything or anyone, you see. And you come to me in your imperfectness. You come to me in your uncleanness. You come to me in your weaknesses, in your wickedness, in your sins, in your crimes, and say that I have to understand and forgive you and love you and grow you and upbring you so you can become a better person. So God is asking you, can you give these things which you are asking from me? Can you give these things to another person? Can you be much more understanding of another person? Can you be much more forgiving of another person no matter how many times they have sinned against you? Can you be graceful in such a way that even though this person is not understanding, this person just doesn't get it. This person is not deserving of your love. This person does not, you know, she or he doesn't get it in terms of being a husband or being a wife. Can you still go back and give, give your love to them? Can you still go back and pour yourself out on them? The same way as God pours himself out out on us while we're being perfect you see one of the things that a lot of people when they hear that you know my husband or my wife cheated on me what should i do a lot of people just say oh come on it's obvious i mean she cheated or he cheated you must just leave even christians have this mentality that you know if your husband or wife has cheated you must just leave but imagine this remember marriage in the bible is defined as the way that the relationship between the church and jesus christ and jesus is god to be worshipped you see to be to be revered above all things but imagine if you were to spend a week worshiping football or worshiping a soap opera or a comedy that you have no time for jesus christ whatsoever even when you woke up in the middle of the night instead of communion with him reading his word through his word you rather wake up and switch on a television so if you look at it it's cheating you see it's adultery because you're no longer having time for the husband of the church who is jesus christ you have time for who television for sports for comedy but after a week you realize that oops I haven't really been atten paying attention to the husband, to God. And you go back to him with a broken heart, asking for forgiveness, asking for grace, for him to keep doing what he is doing in you, to keep doing his work which he has been doing in you, I mean doing in you from the day that he saved you. So to accept that you make mistakes. But you don't want to give the same things to your wife or to your husband. Do you see that marriage is better than a mirror? A husband or a wife or a spouse is better because it is the wife or the husband which makes you, who makes you a better person. A husband is supposed to make you much more forgiving. Why? Because he's going to do a lot of wrong things which are going to hurt you. A wife is supposed to make you a better person. Why? Because she's going to make a lot of mistakes which are going to hurt you. But you're going to have to forgive. The same way that you go up before God asking for forgiveness, asking for understanding, asking for him to be graceful, to still give you food, to still give you sight, to still give you joy. You see, you are going to have to act like the God that you claim to believe in, that you have professed to believe in. So marriage does give you that opportunity because, you know, if you're disgruntled with your family, your mother and father, your sister and your brother, you can just move out. And no one is going to say, oh, he moved out, you see. But when you move out of your household, people are going to say, oh, are this... So are they are they separate? Are they sep have they separated? So you see, people are gonna start saying, Oh, that means there's something wrong in that marriage. That means the marriage your marriage is on a rock. So it gives a bad image to your marriage. So you can't just leave your house. The same way as you can leave the your mother's house or your father's house and go find your own place where you can live by yourself. You see, no one is going to be shocked when you are, unless you're too young to do it, you see. But when you're the right age to move out of your house and you move out, people are going to say, oh, that's good. He's being dependent 
being a man, be, you know, trying to do things by himself, which is a good thing. So people are even going to welcome that and celebrate that. But when you move out of your own home, in which the home, the home that you share with your wife or your husband, now that this raises eyebrows and say, why did she move out? So people are still are going to start asking questions, what happened? Do you see that? So marriage is important in making a person much more loving, much more forgiving, much more graceful, much more understanding of another person. And uh, this person who was at one point a stranger, because you're most likely to marry a stranger as a wife or a husband, not necessarily a stranger that the person didn't know, but to say that you didn't really know them, but you got to know them before you married them, of course. You see, so that's why marriage, that's why a spouse is better, because marriage Marriage will never, I mean, a mirror will never make, a mirror will never make you improve in terms of being much more kind, in terms of being much more loving, in terms of being much more forgiving. Because in the mirror, you're looking at yourself. You, The only thing that you can prove is physical appearance if you're thinking, oh, I need a shave, you know. A shave does not improve a man's character. It improves a man's appearance. And once you're married, your appearance no longer play a role. I'm not saying don't look at yourself. But what I'm saying is that once you're married, what, what matters the most becomes your character, the way that you're going to treat your wife or your spouse or your husband. Do you see that? If you're treating them bad, it wouldn't matter if you're handsome or you have a six-pack or you're pleasing to the eye. They're not going to see that anymore. All they're going to see, they're going to see exactly who you are, an unforgiving, unloving person. Who's inconsiderate? Do you see that? So what I'm saying that a mirror, I mean a spouse is better than a mirror. What I'm saying is that a mirror does not teach you anything in terms of being human. But a spouse, a husband, a wife will teach you a thing or two about being human, about being having the virtues that all human beings need to be better people. And we see that through God in the way that He is forgiving to us, He's understanding to us. And when we wrong Him, when we sin against Him, He does just ice us and after that he gives us more of himself so we don't have to sin anymore so the question becomes when you your wife has sinned against you or your husband has sinned against you do you now give more of yourself to make them realize they don't have to do all these wrong things because you are there for them you can always be there to listen to what their worries or their fears you can always reassure them and give them security and stability that you will always be there the question becomes do you do that because if you're not doing that, then that means you're still looking in the mirror, you see. But the mirror, when that mirror becomes a man or a woman, they're going to reveal exactly who you are. If you're not forgiving, you're going to see that through the fact that you can't forgive your own wife, through the fact that you can't forgive your own husband. If you're not understanding, you're going to see that because you will see that you're not more understanding of your wife, you're not being more understanding of your husband. But the mirror doesn't show you that. It only shows you your physical appearance, you see. So that is all that I have to say about this subject. Why a spouse is better than a mirror. And if you like content like this, you can always just subscribe to this channel. You can receive more content like this. Thank you for listening.